Hi, it's Miss Wan here. I want to welcome you to this week's class where I will teach you how to ink and colour the focus drawing in Beaverton that we started last week. So first of all, I'd like to go over what art supplies you will need for this week's class. You will need paper, black marker, ruler, eraser and colouring pencils. Optional items include a white jelly roll pen, a blender and burnisher pencil. So today's art class is going to be divided into two parts. The first part of the art class, you will learn how to ink your artwork. In the second part of the art class, you're going to learn how to colour your artwork. So we're going to start off by using a black marker to go over the lines to make it more defined and also three-dimensional. So first of all, I'd like you to take a long ruler and go over the landscape line. Next, I want you to define the tree trunks like this, or you can actually use a ruler. Next, I would like you to define the bottom of each tree with a ruler so it has a nice straight edge. Next. I'd like you to define the star on the left hand side and then I'd like you to outline the moon like so. So next I'd like you to outline the trees and then the bubbles and I'd like you to do that for all the trees. Next I would like you to draw jagged lines like this to represent tinsel. Next I'd like you to add some hatching to the tree trunks to create light and shadow. So hatching means drawing lines like this to create depth. Next, I'd like you to use the ruler to draw the, over the outlines for the Beaverton sign and then write Welcome to Beaverton on the sign. Next, I want you to create the texture on the sign using lines and swirls like this. And then you use a thinner marker for the finer detail. So when it comes to inking your artwork, usually the outline is a little bit thicker than the inside lines so that it's separating one object from the next. Next, I'd like you to ink yourself as a superhero using a thin marker. So what I want you to do now is to take a thick marker and go over the outside line of the superhero so you can separate the superhero from the background. And next, if you have a jelly roll pen, I want you to put three white dots on the eyes, which makes it look really shiny. If you don't have a white jelly roll pen, you can actually color in the eyes, except for three dots like this. So this is an alternative way you can do it. Next, I want you to ink Focus, the autistic superhero, using a Sharpie. Now, since he is on a larger scale, you will be able to draw him with a thick marker without worrying that you might lose the detail. And uh, later on, we're going to draw the tiles with a thinner marker. So as you can see, the moon is on the left-hand side. So what that means is the light source is on the left-hand side and the, um, any shadows should actually appear on the right-hand side. So we're going to draw some lines on the right-hand side of focus to define shadow. And by creating shadow lines, we're making focus look three-dimensional. So next, I would like you to draw over the outlines for the beaver using a thick marker, like so. And then I would like you to use the thin marker for the pattern on the cane. And that's because any detailed work should be done with a thinner pen. Otherwise, the ink will just stick together and then you won't be able to see the detail. And again, I want you to add some shadow on the beaver on the right hand side. And that's because the light source is on the left hand side. Next, I want you to do the holly using a thin marker. Again, that's because it's very detailed. Next, I'd like you to go over the sleigh using a ruler where possible and then freehanding it on areas that are more curved. Next, I'd like you to draw the outline of the holly like this using a thicker marker. The intricate detail on the leaves will remain thin because if you go over it with a thicker marker, it just won't show up. 
Next, I would like you to draw a shadow on this sleigh by drawing hatching on the right hand side because the light source is on the left. So whenever you are applying light and shadow, um, you need to make sure the light source is always consistent. So your light source is the moon, so the shadow always has to be on the right hand side of everything that you do. Next, I would like you to uh, draw the outline on the elk using a thick marker. And I want you to do the eyeballs last because you need to switch to a thinner marker for that because it's a little bit more detailed and the thick pen won't show that clearly. Next, I'd like you to add shadow on the legs like this. And these lines are called hatchings. And these hatchings create shadow, giving a three-dimensional look. I want you to do the eyes and the nose last using a thin marker. Next, I want you to take an eraser and erase all the pencil marks. Now that you have completed the inking process, I'm going to teach you a few things about colouring techniques. So I would like to introduce you to the use of colouring blenders when it comes to colouring your art. If you apply the blender to your colours, you will notice that the whites will start to vanish and the colours will become more smooth and solid. If you apply the blender on several colours, the colours will blend nicely, creating a gradation of colours and create new tones in the process. Blenders can make your art appear more smooth and realistic. And now I'm going to introduce you to the use of burnishers when it comes to colouring your art. A burnisher keeps your whites white. You can apply it as an undercoat or an overcoat. As an undercoat, you can use it to create brick lines, for example, and then colour in the bricks without needing to colour around it. If you want to create a shiny effect, you can choose to use the burnisher as an overcoat. So there are different effects you can achieve by the way you handle your pencil. So if you apply light pressure, the colours will come out lighter. If you apply medium pressure, it will appear a little bit darker. If you apply a lot of pressure, then it'll be extremely dark and more solid. If you have trouble applying light pressure to your pencil, you can handle the pencil from the top. You will notice the colours will be a lot lighter as a result of the way you're holding the pencil. The directions of your strokes is important, so I highly recommend that you use one direction when you are shading. If you apply your strokes in different directions, you will notice that the colours will be inconsistent as a texture. Another stroke you might want to consider is um, applying cross-hatching, and that involves colouring in one direction for the first layer, and then the second layer you do the opposite direction. And that way you would be able to cover the full area very thoroughly and have a more solid appearance in uh, pigmentation. Another texture you might want to consider is circular motions. This provides a different texture and can be very useful uh, depending on what texture you prefer. Another technique you might want to try is layering. You can choose two different colours and put them on top of each other creating new colour tones. So I'd like to teach you how to do highlights. First of all, you need to have a light source so you can determine which part of the drawing should have uh, a brighter side and which side should have a darker side. And you can have the highlight using white or you can use a burnisher. And um, here I'm just using gray to depict shadow. So now that I've taught you some basics uh, when it comes to colouring techniques, I would like you to apply everything that you've learned to the drawing of focus in Beaverton. So just to summarise, the directions of the strokes matter, the pressure that you apply matters, the amount of layers that you apply also matters, and it's also important that you factor in highlights and shadows using whites, and darker colours and the burnisher too and um, 
Always use a blender if you have that available to you because it's always going to make your art pop. So now that you've completed your drawing of Focus in Beaverton, I hope you really like it and show it to your friends and family. I also hope that you will continue with drawing and colouring at every opportunity you have so that you can become the best artist you can be.